Good to see you again. It's Sakura. So I had iSpring reach out to me and ask me if I would like to demo their product called iSpring Suite. Maybe if you're in my field of learning and development, you have heard of it. Basically what iSpring is, is an e-learning content authoring tool, an authoring software that helps you make e-learning content super easily, super quickly. So today what I'm gonna do is go through this tool with you, walk you through some of the cool functionalities that I think would be extremely helpful if you are in the L&D profession like me, if you're an instructional designer, maybe you're an educator, maybe you're just someone who for whatever reason needs to make a lot of e-learning or online training content, this video is for you so that you can use this as a reference to think about if this is a tool that you would like to adopt in your company maybe, or for yourself. So one important thing to note is iSpring only runs on Windows. However, you have two choices as a Mac user to use this tool. One is to use Bootcamp to run Windows as like a second OS. What I'm doing that I have found out so far and iSpring actually helped me do it, is I downloaded this uh, application called Parallels, which lets me run Windows on a Mac, but not on Bootcamp, like directly within the Mac OS as like a separate screen, as a virtual machine. So as you can see here, I've pulled up Microsoft PowerPoint. And again, I'm running Parallels here. So this is Windows on my Mac right now. So what happens is if you have iSpring Suite and you download it to your computer, it automatically pops up here within PowerPoint, which I think is pretty cool because it's kind of like a little add-on application that you can use within PowerPoint so you don't have to learn an entire new tool to create e-learning content. So that's already a big win because I think that the learning curve for making an e-learning content will be much, much easier for you. First and foremost, one functionality that I would like to talk about is what's called their content library. Let's say that I'm making an onboarding training for a company and you have to start from scratch. I have this pulled up and this is a full menu of iSpring Suite. I'm gonna click content library and slide templates. Microsoft PowerPoint does have some templates, but it's not catered at all towards trainings. And I know this because I have tried making trainings of PowerPoint too. So as you can see here with iSpring Suite, you have so many different types of templates to choose from. And based on my own opinion, I do like the design because it's quite neutral, it's clean, it's nice. Pretending that this is an onboarding training, I'm gonna choose this one here and then click insert. Okay, downloading. Great, so now I have this template. Since you already know how to use Microsoft PowerPoint, I hope you know how to edit it. When you keep adding slides, you can go to insert, again, same as Microsoft PowerPoint, and then new slide here, right? What pops up is the pages that are still within the same theme that you already chose from. Okay, great. So now there's colors and templates matching the first page that I can just continue on with. Next, what I wanna talk about is what's called characters in the content library. Sometimes when you have some kind of role play or character in a training, you're gonna to have to, again, make it up yourself. But here, as you can see, they have so many different characters that you can choose from. And I'm pretty sure I read that they have over 80,000 characters here. So you'll probably find exactly what you want if you really need to. And on the left here, it can even filter by clicking women, so the type of person or gender, excuse me. You can also choose the age. They have kids. They have people who are 40 to 60 and everything between. You also have filtering through clothing, ethnicity. Well, it's pretty advanced. Um, action, so like what are they actually doing? Oh, just gesticulating sounds interesting. So I think if you are someone who wants to be pretty conscious about what kind of characters show up in a training so that people will feel that it's a diverse representation, this is definitely a great tool that you can utilize. I'm gonna just choose this lovely Eleanor that I wanna include in my training, so let's see. Not only do I have her, but now there is a million, not a million, but a lot of different positions that Eleanor can stand in or be in. Okay, great. So I'm gonna add this very neutral Eleanor to my slide here. Perfect. So now she's already in this little box here. Another functionality I wanna talk about is interactions. 
this is one of the ways that you can make online content a little bit more engaging is by having the user actually physically interact with the screen by clicking something or going through something. So let's go through this together. I'm here on iSpring Suite again, and I'm going to go to this interaction button here. Even within this interaction here, you have some of the interaction types that you can choose from. So something like steps, where you have to click to go through them, a timeline, we have process. This is quite common, I think. I see all the time in a training. We have cyclic process. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different types of ones that you can use, but for the sake of this example, let's choose process. Okay, easy enough. So this already comes with a template. It looks like I can also play around with the color scheme even within this template. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to click apply and close. I can also add an introduction and a summary if I want to. So I've added this introduction here. So this is an example of a process explanation here. Okay, so I have my summary here. And then I have my steps one, two, and three. And then I've also added a summary at the end that it'll pop up. So thanks for doing this interaction. Okay, so now let's say that this interaction is done and I want to preview it. Let's preview this together. I'm gonna to click this here. And oh, I like that you can see on different formats like tablets and mobile phones what it's gonna look like because I believe you can also access this type of content offline. So anyways, I'm gonna go back to the computer. So this is what it's gonna look like. Click next. Step two, step three, summary. Easy enough. If I'm done with the interaction, I'm just gonna go save and return to close. So now I'm just saving and returning to the course. And now, oops, I guess next time I'll just have to make a new page before I do this. The interaction is available on my PowerPoint. I want to go over the next thing with you, which is quizzes, which everyone loves in, in online training. So again, I'm just going to go back to inserting a new slide here this time. So I don't delete my other slide. Something I want to mention here is that uh, before I installed parallels on my computer, I was also able to get access to the quiz making or the quiz tool online on the cloud platform version of iSpring Suite. You don't have all the functionalities that you can on Microsoft PowerPoint online, unfortunately, but quizzes is something that you can access online. So just FYI. So you have two options here. You can do a graded quiz or you can do a survey. I'm going to do the graded quiz because it's a little bit more common. Okay. So with the questions, again, it's a recurring theme. You have a lot of different templates. So you have multiple choice, multiple response, true or false sequence matching, etc. Uh, for the purpose of making this very easy, I'm going to make a true or false question. So I'm going to add this here. And so now you have this little pop up that you can write your question. So true or false. My cat is cute. And then you put this correct answer here. You just click true or false. And then you can also add feedback for your responses. So 100% correct. Good job. Incorrect. You did not choose the correct response. Let's see if you can add another question that's a different type here. Let's do a multiple choice. Okay, that worked. So something I just noticed here is that when I look at this feedback and branching part, there's also a functionality for branching, which means that if someone, let's say, gets an answer correct or wrong, then you can branch that to a question that you specify next. So I think that's a pretty cool functionality. I think Google survey has something like that, but it's pretty difficult to use. Um, so let's see if you got this incorrect, this multiple choice question, maybe you would make it go to the next slide or you would maybe make it done. You're done with the quiz. So question two, option one, two, three. Okay. So I'm going to save and return to course and let's see how that shows up. Great. So now I have this quiz. I want to check what this actually looks like though. So let's do a little preview. So I'm going to go to, let's see here, iSpring Suite. 
and then preview. And you should go through preview under Ice Cream Suite, otherwise it would just show you the slides on Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's do this together. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time to process the slide. Great. So again, this is the preview of the training. Although it is in PowerPoint, now this is as, is as if you would be actually taking the training, but not on PowerPoint. Okay, so I see that it doesn't actually show the whole slide if you have an interaction or a quiz. So it would just go right to that, which I think is great. You don't have to edit it, anything else. So you have this introduction. And then you have the steps, two, three, four, okay, the summary, great. Okay, and then now I have this quiz here, true or false, my cat is cute. Let's click true and submit. Okay, 100%, good job, that's the feedback that I put in. Okay, and then this is the multiple choice one that I put in, so let's choose, I forgot which one I put was correct, but let's see the option one and see. Okay, so I chose the right response and then it even shows you the grade that you got so congratulations you passed i just added another slide here and i think i want to check out the screen recording feature so record all or part of your screen okay and then it pops up like the quiz and the interaction that we did before and i'm just going to go to new recording okay great so what you can do here is you can record the actual screen. Sorry, it's gonna be a little bit confusing because I'm also recording the screen for this video that I'm making. Let's see if I can just make a smaller part of the screen recording. So just for the sake of this video, let's say I only want to show this part of the screen. And then you have a preset for the selected area for the dimensions. And then the microphone I'm already talking into, as you can see here with the green. Like again, you would think that you would need a different tool to do a screen recording or a video tutorial, but on iSuite, on iSpring Suite, you can just do it natively within Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's see, let's uh, do a little recording. Pumps me down. Great. Uh, I'm not gonna do an actual tutorial because I'm seeing one here for my video. Uh, but okay, so let's say that, okay, I've done my screen recording, I'm narrating, I'm talking through it, and then it's done. So I'm gonna do a little pause. I can do a pause, I can continue again, and now I can click stop. So now, oh, this is really cool actually. Within iSpring Speed in PowerPoint, you can do this directly. There are some basic things you can do up there. And then there's also my talking that was also recorded via the microphone that you can, you know, if you want to, you can move it around, you can add more videos, you can edit the actual recording of my voice, etc. So that's pretty cool. And it looks like you can also overwrite, for example, the narration that I was doing in case I messed up and I need to do it again. Um, and then you can see here, you can remove noise. So this is a very, very, basic video editor, but it's great, again, to just have as an e-learning content creation tool natively within iSpring in PowerPoint. And then when I go back to home, you can record another video. You can also record my, and then I'm just gonna save and return to the course now. Great, so now like the quizzes and the interactions that we've done, now we have a screen recording. So now that I'm done with my course, hypothetically, I'm going to export it. So what I'm gonna do is go to the iSpring Suite tab and then click publish. So for publishing, there's a few different options. The first one is you can export it, for example, to your computer or your desktop as an HTML5 file so that users can have access to it offline. You also have the option to upload it onto iSpring Cloud, which is the cloud platform that you can use to collaborate with other people to make this training, for example and then share it there. And then of course, if you are a learning professional, uh, you have definitely worked with an LMS or learning management system. So what you can do is you can export it as SCORM files, right? So we have SCORM 1.2, 2004, AICC, etc., etc. Oh, Moodle is one I used to use in university. That's kind of a throwback. Just for the sake of it, let's view this course now that it's published. So you can send it via link here by email, or you can just open it here. So I'm gonna do view course. So we have the title page. We have the interaction that we made here. I'm going to the steps. And then the third slide after the summary is going to be my quiz that I made. So, okay, true. 
then option one, true. Okay, the results. Okay, now my quiz is done. Last but not least, uh, no. that's my voice that recorded. So now I watch this video. My overall first impression of Ice Spring Sweet, I can't say fully it's a review because I haven't used it for that long and obviously not for a company that I work for. But I think the biggest pro in this tool is the fact that you have functionality within the tool itself to create this online content. You don't have to have a video maker. You don't have to have a uh, dedicated microphone or audio recorder. You don't have to use different types of software programs to make these little parts like quizzes in role plays. You can do it all in one place. And again, natively within Microsoft PowerPoint, which is an interface and a platform that, sorry, not platform, an application that most people have used in their life. So the learning curve is quite quick. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and thanks again for joining me today. Hope to see you again in my next one. Have a good one, bye.